welcome to Yonkers Raceway in Yonkers, New York for the Breeders' Crown Championship Series tonight. Two-year-old pacing fillies. These fillies will enjoy some very nice weather for racing, clear and cool. The track is very fast. Now, normally harness horses like uh, warmer weather to go fast, but already tonight we have seen a track record set by an older trotter. This is such an outstanding field of young pacing fillies that uh, perhaps we can look forward to a track record, too. Hi, everybody. I'm Sharon Smith, along with Stan Bergstein of the Harness Tracks of America. America. This uh, 1985 crop of two-year-old pacing fillies is remarkable in its depth. Unfortunately, because of circumstances, we uh, apparently will not see the very best one. The most remarkable of the remarkable crop, Follow My Star, has come up lame. She came up with a sore foot yesterday. Trainer Bruce Nichols tried desperately to get it poulticed and treated in time for tonight. Couldn't do it, ran out of time, and she will not be here, which now puts the heavy weight of uh, favoritism on the entry. There, incidentally, you saw Follow My Star, one of her most brilliant triumphs. She had won 13 out of 14 this year, $817,000, and was bidding to become the first two-year-old pacing filly ever to win a million dollars. But now the favoritism goes to the entry of Caressable and Valentina from the Bill Houghton stable. And they certainly are outstanding as well. In fact, Bill has been uh, known to say that uh, Valentina, particularly Caressable as well, are among the very, very best uh, young fillies he's ever trained. And, of course, there are people who think that Follow My Star may be the best two-year-old pacing filly ever. So it's an exceptionally good crop. Well, we won't see Follow My Star, but we are going to see the fastest two-year-old pacing filly in history. That is Razzle Hanover. She did it in a time trial recently in Lexington, and uh, she's also a good racing filly, too. Well, she is. She has set the world record of 1 minute 50 six and three-fifths seconds over the five-eighths mile track at the Meadows in western Pennsylvania. On the strength of that performance, they sent her to Lexington for a time trial where she goes against the stopwatch with a running horse prompter. And in that race, she went in one minute 52 and two-fifths. No two-year-old filly has ever gone that fast before. In fact, she went faster than Nihilator did at the Red Mile uh, in a race, of course, and he was a colt last year. And she, she's just an extraordinarily fast filly. There she is in action, and the question is, can she get around the half-mile track? Yonkers being the first half-mile track we've seen in this series, we've been looking at five-eighths mile tracks. This one, they go around twice. The turns are smaller, and once before this year, she did not get around the first turn in a race uh, qualifying for a $300,000 La Paloma. The following week, however, she did. So the question tonight is, will she or won't she? Well, it's a question that her trainer certainly is asking himself right now. Actually, he's probably more worried about other things. That's Jeff Mallett, who's got some experience in winning these races with very young horses. He did it last year with Dragon Slayer. He speaks to Kenny Rice right now. I'm in the paddock with Jeff Mallett, the trainer of Razzle Hanover. She has certainly proven her speed, not just on a mile track, but also on a 5-H track. How does she look going into tonight, Jeff? Right, we look pretty good in there. She's certainly got a lot of speed. Uh, she has a tendency to uh, be a little erratic at times on a half-mile track. She's made breaks uh, once before here, and then once before here she won in two minutes. Um, as far as speed goes, she has plenty. I'm, uh, I'm excited about it, as long as we can get through that first turn okay. You, are you worried any at all about the half-mile track with her? Well, it's a concern. She's uh, She had made a break once before on a half-mile track, uh, going for a lot of money early in the year. Uh, she's a great filly on a big track. She's a very good filly on a 5A. She's a world's champion. Um, and she's still a very fast filly on a half-mile. With Follow My Star out tonight, how does that affect the strategy, you think, not just for Razzle Hanover, but for the other horses in the field? Uh, I think it affects it a lot. Uh, for one thing, it, it puts Billy Houghton in kind of a tough position. Uh, Valentina's got to follow a long shot instead of following uh, Follow My Star, which would have been a big advantage. Um, it sure helps us a lot. You hate to see a uh, great filly like Follow My Star scratched. But, uh, you know, it helps our chances. Right quickly, you've been in the winner's circle before in the Breeders' Crown. How about Dragon's Lair? Right, Dragon's acting real good. He trained in two minutes this morning. Uh, he got a clean bill of health from uh, the veterinarians at New Bolton Center to go on. We're hoping for the Breeders' Crown November 29th. Good luck. Thanks very much. Thank you, Kenny. Jeff Mallett, the trainer of Razzle Hanover. Sharon? Well, thank you, Kenny. Well, Follow My Star was the morning line favorite. She would have gone off as the favorite almost certainly tonight. She is out. That leaves morning line favoritism to the uh, hot and stable entry of Caressable and Valentina. You can see Caressable there listed at 2 to 1. That is the price in the morning line for the entry. Uh, most of the others long shots. Uh, Valentina, obviously, 2 to 1 as well. Razzle Hanover, an extremely generous 12 to 1. Perhaps the odds maker remembering her break here in a half mile track earlier in the season. That's a look at the morning line for the Breeders' Crown race for two year old pacing fillies, and that is ahead on ESPN.
Breeders' Crown is brought to you by Castleton Farm, tradition of excellence, commitment to the future. We're back at Yonkers Raceway where the Breeders' Crown race for two-year-old pacing fillies is still ahead. Earlier we told you that Follow My Star, who would have been the favorite, has been scratched because of a hoof injury. Kenny Rice is trackside with her owner right now. Let's get on to Kenny. Thanks, Sharon. With me, Mr. Alan Wilk, who is the owner of Follow My Star. With racing comes the good and the bad. You've had a lot of good with Follow My Star. Unfortunately, the bad comes tonight in the Breeders' Crown. She is unable to race. What is her condition right now? Will she be racing again this season? Well, she probably could race. It would be tough to bring her back for her last stake, which would be the eliminations next uh, weekend and the final on the following weekend. We've decided to retire for the year. She was racing so well this season. Still the best two-year-old filly out here, you think? Filly of the year? Well, I'm the owner. I would be the last one that should suggest that. My trainer tells me that, but we'd, we'd, be ha we'd be very pleased if she got the honor. She certainly has had a good season. I guess if there is any consolation, it is that next week you also have a, a two-year-old looking forward to in the uh, coming up next week in the Breeders' Crown. Well, we have a uh, speedy crown filly who uh, was fortunate enough to, to beat the Mary Annabella winner uh, this week. Uh, coming her last quarter in about 28 seconds in her third race and uh, as I had indicated earlier she just came off the uh, an operation for a trapped epiglottis. Okay thank you very much and good luck next week Mr. Wilk. Thank you again. Okay Shannon back to you. Thank you Kenny. Well of course uh, anybody who's connected in any way with racehorses knows that there are ups and downs uh, over a career and certainly within a season. Uh, for some people, there are certainly a great deal of ups in one season, among them Billy Houghton. Now, he's uh, spent the year really uh, chasing records with his great three-year-old pacing colt, Nihilator. Nihilator, of course, is the fastest racing standard bred of all time. He did it for Billy this summer. And Billy finds, though, he's not alone in his stable. There's two good two-year-old pacing fillies, and here's Kenny with Billy right now. Thanks, Sharon. It is very rare for any person to be at the top of their sport for four decades. This gentleman has Bill Houghton, who as a driver and a trainer has dominated the sport for four decades now. And Bill, tonight you have Caressable in there. You're going to be driving Valentina. Of course, it has been a great year for Annihilator. Looking back on some of the great horses you have had, and you think a lot, too, of the Philly Pacers. You think of Bell Acton, I guess, right off the bat, wouldn't you? Yes, Stanley Dancer will tell you today that she's the greatest Philly, two-year-old Philly he ever drove. He won the cane here in October when she was a two-year-old beating the males. That was the thing about Bell. It's unusual to find a Philly pacer going on as a mare to race against the Colts and do well. You see that more often in the trotters. What made her special? Well, she was just a, a great usable Philly, had a tremendous amount of speed and could go a long way. People always like to compare. Is it fair to compare, say, a horse now like Valentina? Just a two-year-old, is it uh, too early to say this is a great horse, a horse destined for greatness? Well, I think it's, uh, she is because she's already done more than most of the others ever have. She went 58 and two here, parked over three quarters of a mile that night. You've also handled, among others, and there's so many, but Handle With Care also comes to mind. Another good filly for you. You see any similarities, say, when you're out on the track with uh, Valentina as, say, with a handle with care? Well, uh, again, handle with care was a great race mare. She was easy to handle. She raced either from behind or in front, any way you wanted her. And again, she beat the males a good many times. Part of the entry tonight, along with Valentina, is Caressable. Caressable has had success paralleling the lines of uh, Follow My Star this year and also along the lines of Valentina. How do you think she's coming into this race? She should be real good. She's coming off of uh, wins, and uh, she's uh, only been, I think, back of second once. How do you see the race shaping up for Valentina tonight? Well, I have a bad position, being uh, following my star was scratched. I thought it was great when I drew behind her, but now I'm behind a horse that shows almost nothing and has never been on a half-mile track either. So you don't have that speed in front of you? I sure don't, and I'm liable to get shuffled real bad. Good luck tonight, Bill. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Bill Houghton, driver, trainer in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, now in the 80s. He remains at or near the top of harness racing. Sharon? 
Thank you, Kenny. The uh, two-year-old race is still ahead, but up next we have got an open handicap for fillies and mares, a good group of fillies and mares. We'll take a short time out and then be back with that. Well, the eighth race is official here at Yonkers. The winner, Forever Sparkle, the three-year-old pacing filly, bang, 340, 260, and 240. She was the odds-on favorite. In second place, 301, and uh, she paid 1620 and 540. In third place, Courage, my dear, paying uh, $6 to show. So that is the official order of finish for this eighth race, this open pace for fillies and mares. Uh, every time that you look at a harness race, you watch uh, the drivers working hard or not working so hard, perhaps, as in the case of that uh, filly that we saw win that race. It's a challenge driving, something that I discovered recently. I have ridden horses quite a lot, but I have never driven them. So at Delvin Miller's farm in Pennsylvania recently, I talked to driver Sherry Keith about how to drive a horse and she gave me some instructions on how you drive a harness horse it's something that i had never done before here's what sherry had to tell me the first thing you should know is you don't want to crash <laughs> it's easy here because there's nothing to crash into if you're at a raceway you have to be sure you're not hitting any other horses or any equipment on the on the track at so the time. So I have to look around to you make sure. To look around. It's there. Yeah. And if you have a nice sized colt like this one, you have to make sure you're looking around the sides because you can't always see over top. Okay. You want to take a nice light hold of your horse. And you do have him held lighter than if he was a riding horse. You would oh, have yeah. more contact with a riding uh -huh. horse. You want a nice light contact. You want the horse to be willing to move forward. The most important thing this horse is going to do in his career is move forward. And so you want him very willing to move on. Mm -hmm. And you always want to keep your horses with a nice soft mouth. You don't want to ever want to abuse them with a the bit in your, their mouth. You don't want to discourage him from oh, going now, forward when he should be. You want to keep him as happy as possible. You want him to like being out here. Okay. <laughs> He's to be an athlete. He's going to have to spend many hours and many miles going around these circles. And you have to keep his attitude as good as possible. A horse with a bad attitude uh, doesn't make a good racer. All right, you are, are flipping the whip at him. You're not hitting him in any way to sting him, No, though. mostly what you use the whip for is just a cue, a trick. You want him to feel that, to know that he's to move forward, to keep his attention. It's so much different than riding when you can use your legs on a horse mm -hmm. that he's uh, mostly listening to the lines and to the whip. You want to try? Sure, why not? Now, um, okay. uh, you hold on to the whip. I'll hold the whip. Do I hold the reins similarly to if I was riding? I mean, I would just sort of... The way to hold the lines is you want to put them between your middle okay. finger and your index finger like that. Okay. With your thumb over top. Okay. And that okay. way, someday when you're driving your horse, you can hold your stopwatch in this hand. Oh, I see. Oh, excellent. <laughs> and your whip will be in that hand, and you'll be well equipped. Okay, I do, I do need to steer him. Drive him home so. in the stretch and to. And you want okay, to now sure yes, he wants the, he wants to go the, into the gap here and, and they finish. They always the day. want to head out the gate. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> one thing to notice: uh, anywhere near a gate. Yeah. All right. And the young horses, they drift around a little. You have to, like I say, keep their attention, keep them headed in the right direction because they are just babies. Okay, now slow them down a little, just pull, but uh -huh, not but not not hang on. Just ease on him a little bit, and he'll come right to you. Easy. Easy. I'm feeling he's a little nervous about letting him. Say hello to his buddy next door. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing fine. You're doing fine. He's, he's very enthusiastic. This is nice to know. Uh -huh. <laughs> Want to go around again? Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. No, come, come on. on. Don't stop watch. You ready for your work? Yeah, whip? I am. We need more women in this sport. <laughs> I'm trying to share. Oh, yeah. I'm glad. Yeah, we get him over here to the outside a little. Come on, boy. Well, Stanley, believe it or not, that was There's only a yearling colt, a uh, bonefish colt. Never mind cult. the yearling colt. I think with Shantz and Avatel, we're both in trouble here. <laughs> I'll tell you, it was great fun. It looks like And it was, it was a remarkably good well-behaved colt and just after that i drove a yearling filly by myself by arndon i heard all about it and i heard you did great well i'll tell you i just fell in love with that filly she'd probably like a fifty thousand dollar filly or more and i couldn't afford her i wish i could so that is a little look at driving i had a good time kenny rice is having a good time he's trackside let's get on to kenny right now Sharon, I think a couple of trainers were looking for you just a minute ago. Some driver changes have been made. Gillian's Dream is going to be driven now by Gary Mosher, and Caressable is not driven tonight by Bill O'Donnell. Instead, Hervé Fillion will be on him. Now, there is an update in the odds that even money is the Houghton entry right now, and at 5-2 to two is Bashful Angel. A little bit of surprise, but local driver Carmine Abatello on him. Now, we'll be back with more of the Breeders' Crown from Yonkers right after this. Great. 
It's going a little faster, sweetheart. A little bit further. Come on. We'll be back with more after this timeout. Come on. Okay, easy. Sandy Bowl, sired by Hanover Shoe Farms, trots to a new world record. 1985's Hanover Shoe Farms yearlings are selling October 27th and 28th in Harrisburg at the Pennsylvania State Farm Show Arena. See them exercise daily at Hanover Fairgrounds. Their potential is unlimited because Hanover Shoe Farms has bred more champions than any other standard bred farm. Tomorrow's champions are at Hanover Shoe Farms. Welcome back to Yonkers Raceway in Yonkers, New York. It is the Breeders' Crown for two-year-old pacing fillies. Hi, everybody. I'm Sharon Smith, along with Stan Bergstein and Kenny Rice. These fillies are racing for a total purse of three or six hundred thirty-two thousand dollars, three hundred sixteen thousand dollars to uh, the winner of this race. If either Caressable or Valentina wins, she will become the richest two-year-old pacing filly ever. That honor currently held by Follow My Star. Here are the fillies. The number one filly is. Caressable. This is a Niatros filly owned by Wall Street Stable 2. Uh, most of the same people that are involved with the ownership of Nihilator out of the Bill Houghton Stable. And Hervé Fillion in to drive instead of Bill O'Donnell. Uh, this is Caressable, the number one horse, part of the Bill Houghton Stable entry. That is a look at this handsome Niatros filly. The number 1A is Valentina. Now, Bill Houghton himself is driving this horse. Uh, Al Apples Thomas out of the Bill Houghton Stable is the trainer of record for this filly. Robert Key is the owner of Valentina, and uh, she is a $38,000 yearling, the daughter of Tyler B., who is one of uh, Niatros's arch rivals and has done almost as well as the great Niatros instead. That is Valentina. Continuing on with the post parade now, the number three horse, this is Night of Fire. Now, this is an albatross filly, extremely well-bred, but she, believe it or not, is looking for her first victory. She is uh, placed a couple of times, won $14,000. The five aces ra racing partners are the owners of this filly. This is Night of Fire. She is one of the long shots in the field. The number four horse is Jillian's Dream. This is a Niatros filly, owned by Stanley Caskell and uh, Valdor Farms of New York. Uh, she is a sister to chairman of the board. That's certainly good breeding. Gary Mosher is in to drive her, replacing Richard Silverman. She, too, believe it or not, is looking for her first victory, but she has won $80,000. She's placed in some big races, so Jillian's dream has uh, some credentials to be here tonight. The number five horse is Cher Alike. John Patterson, Jr., the driver, Paul Mann, the trainer, uh, Harry uh, Bicek, and the Fine Children Farms are the uh, owners of Cher Alike. This is a Brett Hanover filly. All these fillies are extremely well-bred. They've certainly got futures as broodmares um, at the end of their racing career. She has won eight times in her career. This is the fast one, Razzle Hanover. This is the one who became the fastest two-year-old pacing filly in history thanks to a time trial. Michelle Lachance is the driver of this filly, Jeff Mallett, the trainer. She is owned by a group which does include uh, our driver Michelle Lachance, uh, part of the ownership of this filly. This is the number seven horse. This is Bashful Angel, which is getting considerable support from this crowd. She's an extremely likely race filly, a daughter of Albatross. Carmine Abatello, a very, very popular driver, uh, the driver of Bashful Angel. George Siegel and Daisy Akers, the owners. Armbro Evita is the eight horse. John Copas is the driver of this horse. Roger Copas, out of the Jack Copas stable, is the trainer of Armbro Evita. The Armstrong Brothers of Ontario own this filly and bred her most happy fella is her sire. She, too, uh, certainly has some credentials in terms of breeding and also in terms of racing. She has won more than $100,000. Powers Court is the number nine horse. James Doherty, the uh, driver of this horse. Timothy Rooney, the president of this racetrack, is the owner of this filly. Uh, Harry Harvey, the trainer of Powers Court. She is a daughter of Bee Gees Bunny, a New Jersey-based stallion. That is a look at the field, and it is a very strong field of two-year old pacing fillies. Stan, who do you like here? Well, there's some problems here because the post positions are not the saddle pad numbers that you've seen. Here's Caressable, who has post position three. Bill O'Donnell, current leading driver in the sport, was supposed to drive. He was helicoptering over from Garden State, New Jersey, where he raced earlier tonight, couldn't make it in time. And Hervé Fillion, the all-time leading driver uh, will of the sport, with over 9,000 victories, will drive instead. Her stable mate, Valentina, you heard Bill Houghton referring to position. She has drawn post position nine. Follow my star had the rail with scratch, so all the horses in the first tier move in, but Valentina does not. She has to remain in the second tier, and so does Razzle Hanover. 
uh, uh, so does Armbro Avita and Powers Court uh, have to remain a second here. There's Valentina with Bill Houghton. Houghton thinks this is the greatest filly he's ever driven. Razzle Hanover, the speed horse, number six, uh, will start from post position five and will have the driving services of Michelle Lachance. And if anyone knows this racetrack, it's Lachance. He has won more races here than anyone else this year or last year. Uh, he, the big danger is the first turn where Razzle Hanover had problems earlier in the year. Powers Court, Tim Rooney's horse, named for the most famous Waterford Crystal pattern and for a famous estate in Ireland, has Jim Doherty. And she has speed, is coming off of an impressive victory, a very impressive victory in her last start. She's an outsider at 12 to 1, and might surprise. Anything in the odds here, uh, Stan, surprise you? I was a little bit surprised at this very lightly raced bashful angel getting quite so much support from the crowd, although her odds are going up a little bit. Well, she beat Gillian's Dream by two and three quarter lengths recently, 158 and three. She's only made six starts, but won three of them. Well, that is a look at the field for this Breeders' Crown race for two-year-old pacing fillies. And if you're looking for quality, you are certainly looking at it here tonight. We'll be back with the race from Yonkers Raceway in New York after this timeout. We're back at Yonkers for post time for this two-year-old filly pace approaches. It uh, started out anyway to be a large field. That means um, horses uh, leaving behind other horses, Stan. And what does that do, especially, well, of course, to Valentina? Two tiers, and it's very tough. The, there are only six in the first tier. You do not move from the back tier to the first. Bill Houghton with Valentina thought he was going to be starting behind Follow My Star. Now he is starting behind Night of Fire, who is 25 to 1. No, is 22 to 1 right now and who has never raced on a half mile track and has made only six starts in her life. Houghton is worried. He is behind an inexperienced horse going into a half mile track turn and he doesn't know how he'll make out. Razzle Hanover on the other hand who has that blazing speed doesn't know whether she can get around the first turn. If she gets around the first turn she has tremendous speed and should be able to carry it. It's a case where it might be nice to be on the outside away from all these other fillies. Let's go down to Kenny trackside right now. Thanks, Sharon. As Stan mentioned, it's going to be interesting to see how Valentina gets off. That was one of the concerns of Bill Houghton when it was announced that Follow My Star was scratched because he was looking for that speed in front of him to set things up. Also be interesting about Razzle Hanover. Jeff Mallett's very impressed with his filly. She has done well, obviously, on a mile and a 5.8. He thinks that she can do well on a half mile, but she has broken before, and that is his big concern. The crowd here likes him. That's the top two choices, and, well, they should be, Sharon. Thank you very much, Kenny. Well, the uh, Valentina Caressable entry is currently listed as 3 to 5. They are odds on, uh, at least according to this crowd here tonight. That's uh, short odds. Of course, you're getting two very, very good fillies for the price of one. Razzle Hanover at 2 to 1. Remember, the, the morning line odds maker listed her at 12 to 1. The, the crowd is probably better down on the strength of that extraordinary time trial. Currently now, Bashful Angel, the, the seven horse at 8 to 1. Those are the only horses in single figures. The rest are our genuine long shots. So, you know, if you like a long shot, maybe you spotted one earlier. These two-year-old pacing fillies uh, getting ready to line up. Uh, were, any observations here on how these horses wound up? I noticed earlier, Stan, that uh, Caressable didn't seem to want to pace while well, she was She was acting up. up a little bit earlier. Uh, a fillion, of course, uh, never sat behind the horse before in his life, uh, to my knowledge. Will be driving her brand new, but her very fillion, as you mentioned, he's won over 9,000 races, and in one single season, he won 637, so he knows his way around the racetrack. Shouldn't have too much trouble with her. Uh, Valentino, we'll see how she races. Both of these horses have something in common. They both started 14 times and won nine. They both won over $500,000. They both let loose in their last starts, which is a danger signal, something wrong, and Bill Houghton thinks it might have been that they both had throat problems and haven't fully recovered, possibly. Yeah, he did mention that they had them at almost the same time, but not quite, but he thinks that they're healthy now. Uh, Valentina looked very good warming up. She's very attractive, neat-looking filly. They haven't been holding on at the finish. They haven't been hanging in there at the end, and, and that, of course, can be very, very costly. And if Razzle Hanover and uh, Powers Court can mount their charges, we'll see what happens here. In fact, Valentina is, uh, if, if the races were only seven-eighths of a mile, she looks like she'd be a sure winner. She is leading at the seven-eighths pole in, in virtually all of her races, but <laughs> that's not where they pay the money. No one mentioned Sherlock, and she was beaten only ahead by Follow My Star just a few weeks ago. Yeah, she uh, didn't come off a real good race in Lexington, but before that, she was, um, you know, outstanding. She uh, won several races in a row. So Cheryl Light might be your long shot if you're looking for some odds, because you won't get any odds in Caresable and Valentina. They will go off as the odds-on favorite here tonight. Patterson is driving Cheryl Light, Johnny Patterson Jr., is the second leading driver here, as we mentioned earlier, behind, of course, Michelle Deschamps, who has spread eagle the field. 
hundred and twenty wins now. Okay, and these uh, two-year-old pacing fillies are lining up again. They'll be lining up in two tiers, even though uh, one late withdrawal and a scratch has probably left room for more of them on the first tier. There will be those fillies, including part of the favorite entry, lining up on the second tier. These fillies are getting into line now behind the uh, starting gate, and their noses are at the gate. As these fillies approach the start, let's go upstairs to Bob Meyer, the track announcer. They're all Killian's dream tries for the lead. Caressa, but in between horses, second. Show like towards the outside third. Razzle head over the far outside fourth. Night of fire on the way out fifth. Valentina Lone the inside sixth. Around the turn, moving towards the back stretch. Gillian's Dream in front by three lengths. Caressa will in between horses second. Night of fire on the road third. Share a light, three wide on the outside fourth. With Brazel Hanover moving on the far outside fifth. Approaching the quarter Gillian's Dream has the lead. Share a light the outside second challenge. Quarter time is 28 and three. At the paddock turn the first time. Gillian's Dream on the inside. Share a light on the inside second. Brazel Hanover the far outside third. Three of them across the track. Caressa will along the inside fourth. Night of fire fifth. On Broadway beat of sixth. Valentina seventh. As they come out the stands the first time. Ranzel Hanover on the outside kicks over the lead. Gillian's Dream back to second. Cheryl Light moving on the win third. Caressa will along the inside fourth. Gamma Feelings on Broadway beat of the outside fifth. Night of fire on the rail sixth. Valentina seventh. Power scored eighth. And Bashful Angel trails to feel ninth. Half time is 58 seconds flat. Around the clubhouse turn the final time. Rise of Hanover's drawn out by Felix. Gillian's Dream second. Caressa the on the rail third. Cheryl like the outside foot. On Bowie Vita. Three wide on the outside fifth. Training out down the back stretch. Rise of Hanover's front by three and a half lengths. Caressa will come in on second. On Bowie Vita the far outside third. Valentina the extreme outside foot. Three quarters, 129 flat. Round the far turn, Razzle Hanover in front by two lengths, Caressa Bellow on the rail second, Valentina the far outside third. On Bowie Vita in between horses fourth, Night of Fire on the rail fifth, Bashful Angel the outside sixth. They control the top of the stretch, Razzle Hanover has the lead, Caressa in between horses second, Valentina the far outside. Through the stretch, Caressa Bell down the center track with Razzle Hanover and Valentina. Caressa Bell and Valentina, Caressa Bell and Valentina, Caressa Bell, the front. But uh, I, I think Billy Houghton's got to be a happy man right now. His uh, Phillies certainly performed well for him tonight. They finished 1-2, and Billy was really roaring at the three quarters. He had to get out of there very cautiously, and of course was virtually trailing the field. LaShance got to the front with Razzle Hanover, didn't have any trouble getting around the turn. But then Hervé Fillion with Caressable came on, and uh, Fillion guiding this filly with power and authority. Okay, let us look at the finish again. Caressable, not standing performance. We give all the credit in the world to Valentina, considering where she had to run now, race Lachance, her. LaChance here is trying to master Razzle Hanover and keep her together coming into the stretch. Here comes Fillion with Caressable driving up the challenge and Houghton on the outside. Powers Court also closing fast for Jim Darty. There's Fillion urging on, no whip. As you can see, just leaning into her, he has Caressable in front, and Billy Houghton closing with her stable mate, Valentina, who suffered uh, shuffling back in the early stages and made a very strong rally. So here is the great Hervé Fillion returning to victory lane. And Bill O'Donnell is probably wishing his helicopter had moved a little bit faster. Caressable, the unofficial winner of this two-year-old Philly pace in the Breeders' Crown. We'll be back with more from Yonkers Raceway and take another look at Caressable, the winner of the Breeders' Crown two-year-old Philly pace. We're back at Yonkers where the race is official. Caressable is the winner of the two-year-old Philly Pace in the Breeders' Crown. Her stable mate out of the Houghton Stable, Valentina, getting second in the photo finish. And Razzle Hanover, the second choice, getting third. Form certainly held. Kenny Rice is trackside with a man who was very happy to pick up a late ride here tonight. Let's go down to Kenny. Thanks, Sharon. Indeed he is. Herve, you were sitting around back there, and they said, Bill O'Donnell can't make it, but you drive tonight. Well, uh, Billy came to the paddock to me. He said, it looks like they ain't going to make it, so... Irving, would you raise that? Take a shot with that mare. I said, why not? I said, you can't win him if you're not in him. <laughs> well, what do you think about Carissa Bull now? Well, Carissa Bull, she's a nice, real nice filly. She proved, her record proved that, and I was lucky enough. They had a fast half, and uh, at the five eights, I had a chance to move out, so I took advantage of it. And around the last turn, she, I moved kind of early on uh, Michael Lachent that was in front because the filly fell real good, you know. She fell real good, and I moved her, and uh, 
she went pretty easy. I didn't have to go to the whip with her. I just pushed on her, and she was strong all the way. You were able to conserve her a little bit. They get out to a fast time of 58 for the first half, and as we see right here coming around for this final half here, you were able to save some ground by standing along the rail. Uh, yeah, you, around the first turn there, you know, we left out of there kind of quick, so uh, I just kind of steady her around the first turn, and I got in the two-hole. And right there, the three-quarter pole there, I knew the filly was real strong, so I move her early coming off the turn, and she went pretty handy. She's just a real good filly. That's all I can say. Did you expect Mike LeChance to get out so fast with Razzle Hanover going wide early in the race and setting the pace? Well, I, I figured that Mike will be out there winging, you know, pretty good. You know, go for the lead because that filly, she's a real top filly, and uh, they're all a good bunch of filly, you know, when they make it there, so they're top filly. See, you see right here, I just push on her. She was strong all the way. I had no trouble. She's just a great filly. When you called on her, she had it. Oh, yeah, she was strong all the way. I was just a passenger. I had no trouble at all. How good is this horse? First time well, you had a chance to really see her up close. Well, she her record. Her record proved that she's top filly, and she proved it again tonight. And the way she did it, she did it kind of easy, and she was strong all the way. Well, you were a good passenger. Oh, I was just a nice passenger out there. It was, <laughs> felt good all the way. <laughs> Congratulations. Yet another trip for Herbert Villian to the winner's circle. Congratulations. <laughs> And as you can hear, always one of the favorites here at Yonkers. As you take a look at Caressable, Sharon. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kenny. She's a little excitable in the winner's circle down there. And she should be. She's now a very rich filly. In fact, the richest two-year-old pacing filly ever. She's taken that title away from Follow My Star, who couldn't race here tonight. So Caressable, a daughter of the great Niatros, has won the Breeders' Crown two-year-old filly pace. There's lots more ahead here at Yonkers Raceway in New York. We will take a short time out and be back with more of the winner's circle ceremony for the Philly Caressable. Well, it's official and the uh, payoffs are posted. Caressable, the winner of the Breeders' Crown two-year-old uh -huh. Philly Pace, paying $3.40, $3.210. Her stablemate Valentina was second. The payoff's obviously the same. If you had either one, you've got the payoff. Razzle Hanover finishing third, paying $2.10 to show. So that is uh, the official order of finish, the first three finishers, and the Breeders' Crown two-year-old Philly Pace. It's just about time for the trophy presentation, so let's go down to the winner's circle. Okay, Sharon, it's time for Bob Bonney to get yet another trophy. Bob, on behalf of Tim Rooney, Yonkers Raceway, and the Hamiltonian Society, congratulations to you, your Wall Street stables, too. Thank you very much. Hervé, great race. Nice Thank filly. You. Congratulations, Sharon. Congratulations, Bob. You want to sit that down or hold it? I mean, I'll hold on to it. I mean, right. you're used to these trophies now. Congratulations, Bob Bonney, Wall Street Stable. And Caressable comes through with the victory tonight. Uh, your thoughts on her race? She's a hell of a filly, and it was a, in with a great bunch of fillies, and I'm real just tickled to death with this mile. For Wall Street, it has been a, a banner year, and for the last couple of years with Nia later with the two fillies tonight, you just keep finding them, don't you? They're all by Nia Trust. That helps. That helps a lot. Well-bred group we had here tonight. Yeah, a hell of a bunch of fillies, some great, great fillies in there. It's a real honor to beat these fillies. Caressable did not get the attention that the stablemate Valentina was getting, yet no one was doubting her either in tonight's race. I agree with that, but Valentina is a great, great mare. She's been there right from the beginning of the year, so as I said, it's an honor to, be, to compete with these fillies, nevertheless beat them. What do you think has made Caressable so good for you this year? She has obviously been consistent. Maybe some people were wondering, would the layoff hurt a little bit? How would she do? She's a real credit to the Houghton Stable. This filly was a tough filly to break. Uh, her groom homie in the Houghton Stable, Robbie Roberts in particular, I can't say enough the job they did for her because she's been a tough filly all along, and they did a sensational job with this filly. Congratulations again, Bob. Thank you. Bob Bonney, one of the owners of Caressable, and the celebration continues down here. Sharon? Well, thank you very much, Kenny. We're going to look at the race again in a moment. You know, anybody who owns a horse like Nihilator is happy to have a, a major stakes winning filly. It's too bad she's also by Ni Niatros, so well, she can, they can't be bred. But... Bob Bonney touched on the success of the Wall Street Stable, and that's Niatros. Their belief in it. Obviously, and rightly so. Okay, race. here we go. What two shots on the outside? The question was, can Razzle Hanover get around the turn? And obviously, she did, without any difficulty. That's Mike LaChance out there, and you see Billy Houghton down along the rail, and he has to be very cautious because he was behind that long shot. I had no idea how she was going to race. There you see Fillion moving up with Caressable, and on the outside of Fillion, Cheryl like with Sonny Patterson, now going on after Gillian's Dream, who had gotten out of there very fast uh, for Gary Mosier. Up on the outside, that's Sonny Patterson, and there is LaChance, and now he moves with Razzle Hanover. He's discovered she can make the turn without too much difficulty. He knows she has the speed. And here comes Mike LaShawns. They head into the stretch for the first time, approaching the half-mile mark. And he guns Razzle Hanover, owned by Gillian's Dream, for the lead coming to the half. 
very deliberate and gets there in 58 seconds at a very snappy pace with a whip over the shoulder. Horton is still shuffled way back, as you can see, along the rail. Now, pay close attention when they start into the backstretch, because Hervé Fillion, who modestly said he just got out, had difficulty going into the backstretch. He was in very tight quarters behind the horse that was tiring. Right here, you see Gillian's dream start to tire. Fillion whips out around and goes on. And now you see the long striding caressable eating up the ground. And now the question is, can Mike LaChance keep Razzle Hanover and her speed alive? Here comes Caressable in pursuit, and now Houghton on the extreme outside makes his move three wide with Valentina. She's got tremendous speed, but she's been back a long way, and she is going to have to hustle. She comes up alongside of her stablemate, Caressable, but Thurion now comes out of the hole behind uh, the leader and can join Razzle Hanover again here at the head of the stretch. Now LaChance tries desperately to keep Razzle Hanover alive. Thurion, at this point, knows he has it won. His only question is, can he hold off the stablemate, Valentina, and he can handily by a length and three quarters and he's home the last half not as fast as the first but it was a minute and two for the last half but a good performance it's also worth three hundred thousand plus dollars to that filly now a reminder for you you do have a chance to uh, win a trip to pompano park for the breeders crown race at pompano park you must uh, send in a postcard uh, to breeders crown sweepstakes the address is 47 orient way suite 3b rutherford new jersey 07070 by midnight october 15th and you will have a chance for a drawing for the trip to pompano park we'll be back with more in just a minute we're back at yonkers where we've seen caressable win the two-year-old philly pace in the breeders crown championship series stan was it enough to make her uh, the uh, outstanding two-year-old pacing filly of the year or does follow my star still have that oh, no i think they're still going to have a consider follow my star I'm happy for Bonnie, I'm happy for Guide, I'm happy for Bill Houghton, the trainer, but I'm particularly happy for Hervé Fillon. Some people thought he was an eclipse. It's 11 years since he set his record. Here he is again, a great, great driver. Well, Caressable is the winner. Kenny Rice is trackside. Let's go down to him for a final comment. Kenny? Thanks, Sharon. With Follow My Star out tonight, there was no surprise. They expected the entry to be there, along with Razzle Hanover. That's the way they finished up. Caressable was impressive, and you can't say enough about Hervé Fillon. That's one reason he's made so many trips to the winner's circle. Just a beautiful drive for him tonight. Sharon? Well, thank you very much, Kenny. So we have seen the two-year-old pacing fillies next week in the Breeders' Crown Series. We get to see the two-year-old trotting fillies, and we will get to see harness racing at uh, the most magnificent new establishment in harness racing, Garden State Park in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. That's Friday night here on ESPN, the two-year-old trotting fillies in the Breeders' Crown Championship Series. But that is it for the Breeders' Crown for this Friday night. The two-year-old pacing fillies have finished the race won by Caressable. The Breeders' Crown has been brought to you by U.S. Air, with service to over 100 cities across the U.S. and Canada. And by Hanover Shoe Farms. Tomorrow's champions are at Hanover Shoe Farms. For Stan Burstein and Kenny Rice, I'm Sharon Smith. We thank you for being with us for the Breeders' Crown on ESPN.